We're gonna solve this infinitely nested integral, the definite integral from zero to one of square root of x plus square root of x plus square root of x, and it keeps going on nested inside this. This is a pretty gnarly thing to work with, and it certainly doesn't really follow any of the natural integration techniques you would learn in calculus. So let's figure out a different way to write this function. I'm gonna call this function f of x, and it looks like f of x is the square root of x plus, you know, the square root of x plus the square root of x keeps getting nested inside indefinitely. And so the thing we typically do sometimes with these nested or infinite tower things is we write it like this. We write it like kind of a recursive thing, x plus f of x inside. So this is how we should think about this function. And actually we can solve for what this function is just doing a typical quadratic equation thing. You could square both sides. So f squared of x, this would be x plus f of x. And then the typical way we solve a quadratic equation is we move everything to one side. So just make this f squared minus f of x minus x equals zero. And hey, we can even just use the good old quadratic formula on this. Usually the quadratic formula says x equals, but in this case, it's not x equals, it's f of x equals. And then it goes like minus b. So b in this case is minus one, minus minus one would be one, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So one squared is one, minus four, times a, which in this case is one, times c. Well, c is negative x. Typically we think of c as the constant term, but here c is actually the variable minus x. So minus x, I'll just say minus a minus is a plus, all over to a, which is one. So actually we have our function here, or we could say functions because it's a plus and a minus. Well, which one should we choose? Should we choose the plus? Should we choose the minus? Should we choose both? If you look at the integrand here, since our bounds are just between zero and one, and we know that if we plug in any value from zero to one into the square root function, square root of x, it's going to be positive or at least zero. And we could pretty much assume that if we were to keep nesting these square roots, we'd still get positive things under the square root. And in fact, the output here for this whole square root mass, it's going to be positive. So I don't think we should include the negative sign here. Let's just assume that this is plus. And now we have our function. And this we can actually solve via a good old u substitution. This could be a problem given to you in a Calc 1 class now. You could take out that one half, that would be fine. And we'll just take u to be the inside of the square root, one plus four x, that makes du four dx. And if you like, you could even say that dx is du over four when we make our substitution. So I think this will be one plus root u, or I'll just write it as u to the one half power, that's typically how we think of this when we do antiderivatives the dx becomes a du over four. I'll write it like this. And maybe I'll go ahead and just change the limits of integration. These were x limits. We should change them to u limits. So I like to make a little, a little table over here where x's and u's, we had zero and one. And if we plug one into our substitution, that would be one plus four. And we let x be one. So u should be five. When we plug in zero here, one plus zero is one. So our new limits of integration, I think are one to five. We're ready to take the antiderivative, apply the good old fundamental theorem of calculus. I think I'll just simplify one half times a quarter, make that one eighth. The antiderivative of one du, that will be u. The antiderivative of u to the one half should be u to the three halves, divide by three halves, we divide by the new power. Dividing by three halves is the same as multiplying by two thirds. And then we evaluate from one to five using that fundamental theorem of calculus. So I think if we go ahead, we can just plug these in. One eighth, five is for u plus 
2 times 5 to the 3 halves over 3. And then this is all minus, plugging in 1, 1 plus, well, 1 to any power is still 1, so plus 2 thirds here. I need a big parenthesis for 1 eighth. Now you're welcome to crunch this number if you want. I'm a little bit out of space. I'll just write what this is, 5 twelfths times 1 plus root 5. 